Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over the first stages of autonomous driving by demonstrating adaptive cruise control and some of the common mistakes people use when using this feature. So make sure you watch until the end so you can find out if I wrecked this brand new SUV or not. How is everybody doing out there? For those who don't know me, my name is Jeremiah, aka GM Bullfrog, and I'm a certified professional sales consultant, technology expert, and safety advocate with Silverthorn Chevrolet Buick GMC. If you want up-to-date notifications on all the new GM products, detailed guides on how to use the new in-vehicle technology, or any other information that you could use to help make an informed buying decision, make sure you smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my latest content. Today we are going to be in a 2021 GMC Terrain SLT. This specific terrain has the GMC Pro Safety Plus package, which gives us a boatload of features, including the adaptive cruise control that we are covering today. And big shout out to Silverthorne Chevrolet for allowing us to use this vehicle for our demonstration. So cruise control isn't anything new. It's actually been around for a very long time. Uh, it was originally introduced in 1948 by a blind inventor by the name of Ralph Teeter. And the sense has evolved into a standard feature in almost every vehicle today. And the way that it works is you press this button here to turn your cruise control on. And you'll notice that you have a little icon right here on your screen letting you know that your cruise control is available to be set. Um, then you go ahead and you accelerate to the uh, speed that you want to maintain uh, and then you hit the set button and then that will, will display right there where those two dotted lines are. And then the, it'll maintain that speed until you either cancel it pressing this button or if you press your foot on the brake. And you can also use the resume or the plus button to increase your speed or you can use the set and the, or the minus button to decrease your speed as well. So that way you don't have to stop, reset your speed every single time you want to reset it to a different speed. And I know most of you know how to use cruise control and it's pretty simple, but there may be a couple of questions out there. So I wanted to make sure I touch base on that real fast. Um, but with adaptive cruise control, it takes the regular cruise, which is already a fantastic feature and elevates it to the next level. You're going to love this. Trust me, what you're seeing now is my normal state. This is a Super Saiyan. So the idea of adaptive cruise control was actually first introduced in 1991 by Mitsubishi and, and since then has been improved every single year since it was originally introduced. And this feature continues to become more and more advanced, slowly inching its way to that full uh, self-driving car experience. The way it works is your vehicle uses a front-facing camera as well as sensors on the front bumper to detect objects in front of the vehicle. To turn on your adaptive cruise control, you press and hold the cancel button until you see this message pop up on your center dash letting you know adaptive cruise is available. You also know that you're in adaptive cruise control because this icon here changes from the original cruise control icon, which looks like this, and it changes to one that has a car on it, like that. So that's how you know you're in adaptive cruise control mode. Then what you wanna do is you wanna use this button here, which is your forward collision alert. If I press it, you'll see a little gap indicator on your screen here. You have three squares. I like to say each one of those squares represents one car length. And what you're doing is you're setting the amount of distance that you want your vehicle to uh, slow you down when using the adaptive cruise control. So in theory, the way that it works is once you set your adaptive cruise control, you will maintain that speed until you approach behind something going slower than you. Um, then your vehicle will automatically slow down to maintain a safe distance behind whatever vehicle is in front of you. Once that vehicle gets out of the way, your vehicle will accelerate to the appropriate speed that you had a set at. Um, adaptive cruise control is actually so adaptive to the point that your vehicle will come to an, a complete stop if a vehicle is stopped in front of you. And then once that vehicle in front of you continues to go, your vehicle will also continue to go. 
there are some precautions to keep in mind when using this feature, and I'll cover those later in the video. So instead of talking about it, let's go ahead and put this theory into action and see how well this feature actually works in real-time driving experience. All right, so here we go on our test drive. Our dashboard cruise control is turned on. We know because the indicator has a speedometer and a little car there. Uh, so let's go ahead and get some speed rolling here and then we'll try to get behind some cars to really test this feature out. So speed limit here is 30. We'll go ahead and we're gonna go, we're gonna break the law a little bit. We're gonna go a little bit above the speed limit just so we can try to test out this feature. Uh, so we'll get up to about 35. Go ahead and set it. It says right there, cruise control is set to 35. And now we're just continuing to drive down this road until well, we got a truck and a stoplight up here. So this will be a perfect chance to try it out. So my feet are not on the brake or the gas at all. And this is always the part that, okay, light turned green. So we might have to wait a little longer to test the stopping feature. A few moments later. Cruise control set to 50. Our indicator lights are green. The one at the bottom lets you know that the vehicle in front of you is being detected by your vehicle. And the one with the lines is a different safety feature. That's called lane change alert. We'll cover that in a, in a separate video. But we're going cruise control set to 50. Coming up behind this, uh, this Dodge here. All right, speed limit's dropping down to 40 there. Let's go ahead and drop our down to 40 so we're in compliance with the local law. So we're dropped down to 40 now. One eternity later. All right. Looks like that white car in front of him is having trouble staying in the line. So lane change alert would really help that car. All right, it doesn't look like this light's gonna turn red. Do we got a couple more lights in front of us. Hopefully one of them will get to turn red. Oh, this one turned red on me. Okay, so that's a good note to point out. Um, the adaptive cruise control does not detect stop lights or stop signs. So you do have to put the foot on the brake yourself uh, to, in order to stop at a stop light or stop sign if there's no vehicles in front of you. And I just let my foot off the gas. Turn my adaptive cruise control back on. We do have a red light here in front of us. All right, we're coming up behind this Dodge here again, and we're slowing down. Slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. And we're stopped. And the Dodge continues to go, and we continue to go. Once again, no foot on the gas at all. It is a little spooky at first. I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, my hands are kind of sweaty. I got, I got, I got real nervous there for a second. <laughs> I didn't know if the vehicle was gonna stop. I had my foot floating over the top of the brake uh, just to be, just to be in case that uh, uh, something was gonna happen. So, <laughs> um, so adaptive cruise control is, it's, it's a little spooky as far as the stopping is concerned. Um, I mean, I, it is. It does say in in the in the vehicle manual that uh, it is limited braking, so it's not really intended for stop and constant stop and go traffic. Um, here we go again. We're coming to a, coming to a slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, and we're speeding up. Looks like we're maintaining the speed of 20 here. And just like I set the following distance indicator using this button, we're staying about three car lengths away from the vehicle in front of us. The only time that changes is when we come to a complete stop. But as we're following, we're following about three car lengths behind. And we can adjust that gap if we wanted to adjust that gap. We can do two car lengths behind or one car lengths behind. I always like to leave it at three. That way I have the most uh, time to react should the vehicle in front of me slam on their brakes all of a sudden or a, a deer or a person or something like that walk out in front of the vehicle. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. We are coming to a stop here behind this white truck. And coming up behind, it's a little bit of a harder brake than the other one was. It's a, 
I think adaptive cruise control is definitely one of those things that takes some getting used to. Um, it's, uh, in my opinion, definitely, definitely more aimed towards highway driving where there's not as much stop and go uh, as there is in city driving. Uh, if you were trying to use this uh, feature in a, in a big city where there's constant stop or go, I don't know if I would necessarily want to use it in that situation. This is a small road. It's not super busy, so uh, it works pretty well for this situation here. Stoplight in front of us is turning red, so that means these vehicles in front of us are going to stop. Alright, came to a complete stop that time. So, in order for the vehicle to stop going, you notice that indicator light flashing, and my seat actually vibrated as well. Um, the reason that is because the vehicle came to a complete stop, so it engaged the brakes completely. So to get your adaptive cruise control to continue, all you have to do is tap your foot on the gas, and that will get it to continue. Anyway, here's the dealership. We'll go ahead and turn back in there. that'll conclude our test drive and now that is pretty much that um, so now as I mentioned earlier let's recap on some of the precautions that you want to make sure you take as well as mention some of the other ones I got them listed here so I'll just go ahead and read them off um, one the adaptive cruise control is intended more for highway use and has limited braking limited braking so it won't work as intended if you're in constant stop or go traffic. Number two, cruise control uses the front facing camera to dictate how far a vehicle's in front of you. So if you're on curvy roads or hilly roads, it may not work as intended either. Number three, it's not recommended to use the adaptive cruise control in inclement weather that could impair your vision, such as heavy fog or rain or something like that. Um, also, if the roads are extremely icy, you shouldn't really use adaptive cruise control then either because it may not stop in time to adjust for the slipping on the ice. Number four, uh, speaking of impaired vision, if you're in an area that is really, really dark or has extremely low light, then your camera may not be able to sense anything in front of the vehicle either. And then number five, your actual camera on your windshield and your sensors in the front bumper need to be completely um, open and unobstructed in order to work properly. So that means no giant Fig Newton stickers on the front of your windshield. This sticker is dangerous and inconvenient, but I do love Fig Newton. I personally love the adaptive cruise control feature. Um, I know it's far from perfect, but it does improve every single year. And I'm really excited to see where this takes the future of driving. Um, I mean, it could be the first step in leading to cars that fully drive themselves. I know that there's already some cars out there that have experimented in this, but it's not quite there yet. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new from it. I hope we found it interesting. Uh, I enjoy making these videos for you guys. If there's any videos that you guys wanna see in the future, uh, go ahead and hit a comment down in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys are wanting to see. Um, if you have any questions about this feature or any other uh, features uh, on these vehicles, please just let me know. I'm more than happy to help out any way that I can. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that subscribe button and thank you very much for watching. hope you found this video helpful and if you want to see more like it click on the link over here for more helpful tips tutorials and vehicle demonstrations if you have any questions or if there's anything you want featured in my next video go ahead and leave a comment down in the comment section below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get access to all my latest videos on the gm products thank you so much for your support and drive safe out there